Hello from Gardening at Duenza here in Ireland and it's just the beginning of July and for me that means it's time for my Lelia or Cattleya purpurata to flower and a beautiful big girl she is too. So this video is all about Lelia purpurata. So you're very welcome to my greenhouse and this video is going to be just about one thing, just about this particular orchid. So a little bit of backstory, I've had this plant for seven years and it has flowered reliably for the last three years and each year I get three spikes and each spike then produces three to four flowers. So this year I have nine flowers in total and absolutely wonderful they are too. These flowers have white petals and a purple lip and the petals are vaguely flushed with pink which we can see over here. A very very fine plant and it's no surprise that Lelia purpura has gone into the vast majority of named Cattleya hybrids. Its beauty has been considered that important and that desirable that it's just been used in so many hybrids. The growing pattern for my Lelia purpurata is that it starts to produce new growths in late summer to autumn and then round about January, February it completes those growths and then it starts working on producing buds inside its really really long sheaths and it flowers June but this year early July so it flowers regularly at this time and it's something really great to look forward to in the height of summer I've got this enormous great big cattleya that I can place in my greenhouse when people come to see the garden and they all say oh what's that plant I'd like to grow that too so it does have that wild wow factor. Cattleya purpurata of course is a giant it's one of the large flowered cattleyas it has an amazing scent and it has these absolutely fantastic giant flowers that are really really wide and the petals they're really quite thin and look how enormous the flowers are if I put my hand in here behind this particular one. You can see that it's actually wider than my whole hand. Gorgeous, gorgeous flowers. It comes from Brazil but here it's quite happy to live in Ireland and you know that you're doing well with this Lelia or with any other Cattleya when you see that the leaves are pale green in colour. So here you can see that these leaves, they're not a deep green at all, they're really quite pale. And look how big this plant gets. My pseudobulbs and leaves are more than 20 inches from the base to the top. I think it's about 24, 25 inches. So this really isn't a plant for the faint hearted. If you don't have space then this is not the plant for you. Now I'd suggest if you want to grow that you look out for a flowering sized plant to start with because this is a difficult one to get to flowering size from seedling and it's a well it's a fussy little seedling. Now mine was a seedling and it has done well but I think just to increase your chances of success with this particular plant to go for a flowering sized one to start with. And I want to start off by saying that I don't grow this wonderful orchid here in the greenhouse. I grow it indoors on a windowsill. Now I have experimented with putting it outdoors in the greenhouse in summer and it has flowered well. But actually you know what, it flowers well without doing that. So what I've come to understand with this particular Cattleya is that it needs good light but a position on a south facing windowsill here in my house in Ireland is good enough to get it to flower. Now some of the books claim that after flowering you should give the plant a little bit of a rest and just ease up with watering and feeding. However I've never done this and it's never detracted from the plant's overall flowering so well 
do with that information as you will. And I think that's about all I have to say about this wonderful plant, except that it really is wonderful. And I absolutely love giants, giant cattleyas. And this is a giant cattleya, as you can see, with super pseudobulbs and amazing amazing flowers and if you're going to grow a giant if you're going to devote that much space to it in your house then make sure it's something worth growing something that has flowers that you really like and that will earn their keep because this is a plant that for me anyway flowers mostly just once a year i believe if you grow it in very sunny places that you might get two flowerings a year, but I only get one flowering a year. So it really needs to be spectacular when it does come into flower. And this one is. And I guess I need to repot it soon. It's in very coarse bark, but it's been there for several years. However, I'm not prepared to divide it and I'm not prepared to put it in very much bigger a pot. So I think when I do repot it, I'm gonna put it in a plastic pot just to make it that easier to cart around the house and water and everything because yeah it really is a bit of a giant and difficult to to maneuver oh okay so as you can tell it's a bit heavy and i guess that's it the end of the video i hope you liked it and if you want to fire me some questions about Lelia porporata you can put them down below and I'll do my best to reply to them as best I can based on my experience growing this plant on a windowsill here in the temperate zone in Ireland. Thanks very much for watching and check back soon for lots more plant and orchid updates. Bye!